As a balcony gardener, one of the biggest challenges that I face is to maintain a healthy soil. Only healthy soil can sustain healthy plants. Soil is not just there to hold the plant as a substrate, but it is a living thing as such, housing a universe of microorganisms. Plants take in a lot of components from the soil for its growth and strength. This is my 6 meter square balcony garden. Since we have space constraints, there is no room for the huge traditional composting. Maybe the first year of gardening we can get good quality soil from the garden centers or nurseries. But if we grow heavy feeding plants like tomatoes and cucumbers in the soil, they'll take up all the nutrients possible that in the next growing season, the soil will be devoid of nutrients and there will be no nutrients left in the soil. So what do we do then? Do we buy new soil every year? That sounds like an expensive option. Or do we get fertilizers from the garden center? The fertilizers that we buy from the nurseries at the garden centers, however organic they claim it to be, can be harmful to the soil in the long run. They can change the soil composition and kill the microbes in the soil. So we balcony gardeners will have to find a way to make our own soil so that gardening becomes an inexpensive and sustainable hobby. And that is where bucket composting can help us. I've been doing this process since almost two years and there is definitely no going back. This is one way which has helped me to maintain a good healthy soil on my balcony garden. So let me show you how I compost in a bucket on my tiny balcony. Before we get into the process, let us understand what composting is. Let us take a moment to think about what we had for our last meal, be it breakfast, lunch or dinner. Just think about where every ingredient of your meal came from, be it the berries in your oatmeal or the salads. You can see that everything came right from the soil. Literally, soil is what is feeding us and composting is just returning the favor. Composting is the process of breaking down organic material either in the presence of oxygen, which is called aerobic composting, or in the absence of oxygen, which is called the anaerobic composting. An example of the anaerobic composting would be the Bokashi composting, which I have not tried it yet but would love to try it sometime. In this video, we'll be concentrating on aerobic composting, that is, breaking down happens in the presence of aerobic bacteria or bacteria that needs oxygen for their survival. For the bucket composting, we'll need a bucket with a lid. Since we are doing aerobic composting, there should be a lot of air circulation. Therefore, we need to drill holes on all sides of the bucket, including the lid. Don't forget the bottom part to ensure a good drainage. The more the holes, better will be the air circulation and faster will be the composting process. You can also use terracotta pots with holes at the bottom but in this video we'll be talking about bucket composting as it is what most of us have access to. Next we'll talk about how to compost. Simply explain composting is just layering of different materials on top of one another. First let us talk about the brown layer. What is considered as brown? Old used up soil, brown dried leaves, cocoa peat, newspapers, cardboards, they all can be used as brown material. Glossy magazine covers should be avoided as they have non-degradable substances. So I'm layering here my brown layer. This will be our first layer. The next layer will be the greens. The food scraps from the kitchen, the pruned leaves from the garden can all be used as green layer. But there are some things that should be avoided in the green layer. We need to avoid dairy and meat products in our compost pile. This can slow down the composting process and can attract unwanted pests. Except eggshells. We can use eggshells and using them will increase the calcium content in the compost which is beneficial for veggies like tomatoes. Cooked food and sugar are the other things that should be avoided in the compost pile. Any infected or diseased plant should be avoided in the compost pile. Since we are doing composting in a very small scale, the compost pile might not get as hot as the traditional composting. So some of these diseases can sustain the composting process and can spread to the other plants. We don't want that.
Next would be to add an accelerator. This is completely optional. The idea is that we introduce some amount of bacteria already into the compost pile to kickstart the composting process. For this we can add yogurt or fermented rice water or even some leftover compost from our previous batch. For my compost pile, I'll be using fermented rice water and some compost from the previous batch. As I said, adding an accelerator is totally optional. This will help in accelerating the composting process, but even without it, the composting will happen. Now I'm going to top it with another layer of browns. The next ingredient in the compost pile is the adequate amount of moisture. If the kitchen waste that we are adding is wet enough, then we don't need to add any extra water. Since mine had no moisture in it, I'm adding some water. Remember that we need to maintain the correct amount of moisture in the compost pile for aerobic composting to happen. If there is excess water, the compost pile will get compacted and compressed and there will be no adequate airflow in it. Which brings us to the next item, airflow. Weekly once we have to check on the pile, give it a shake or a mix for air circulation. Weekly ones we can also go ahead and further add a layer of greens and browns depending on the volume of the bucket. Once it is full, keep it for resting until it breaks down. Note that even though the bucket is full now, the size will reduce to half or even less than half once the composting process is done. Next, let's talk about temperature. Sunlight is not essential for composting, but optimum temperature is, and they need about 25 to 30 degrees centigrade. That is why in summers, the composting is faster and in winters, it is slower. But it doesn't mean that you cannot compost in winters. Only thing is, it will be slower. Where can we store the bucket compost? We can store it anywhere, in any corner of the balcony or terrace. Since sunlight is not important, we can even place them in the dark corners which becomes really convenient. This summer, I kept it underneath my raised bed which was very practical and space saving. Winter, I'll keep them in the inner portion of the balcony so that it'll be a little bit more warmer when compared to the outer portion. I had so many concerns and questions in my mind before I started the composting journey and there were many things that just kept me from even trying it out. Let us go through them. Will there be insects on my balcony? Will they spread and get out of control? This was one of the major concerns that I had. I'm going to be honest here. From my experience, there will be insects in the compost pile that is normal, but nothing that will go out of hand. If you think the amount of insects is increasing, then increase the amount of brown matter or brown material that we add to the compost pile and also reduce the watering of the compost pile. Let it dry for a while. If you can maintain the correct proportion of greens to browns, then most of the problems that comes along with the composting can be avoided. Usually they say we have to add greens and browns in one is to one ratio but I usually add a little bit more brown matter so that I can avoid all these problems and also try to maintain the correct amount of moisture. It should just be moist but not too wet. I'm a bit of a clean freak and I like my spaces to be clean and insects would be a big no for me so if I tell you it's okay you can believe me. The next concern I had is will it smell bad? Will it disturb my neighbors? Since most of us live in apartments, which are just a wall apart, we need to be careful not to disturb our neighbors. This is my fifth or sixth time composting on my balcony and I have not experienced any bad smell from the compost pile. And if you think about it, we are just putting some vegetable scraps or fruit scraps or even pruned leaves from the garden. There is nothing that can smell bad in it. Since I live in a temperate country, this was one of the major questions I had. What about winters? We have pretty strong winters here and can I continue my composting journey in winter or should I stop it? As I mentioned before, temperature plays an important role in composting process. Therefore, the process will be slower in winter. How do we know if composting is done? You know the compost is ready when we cannot identify anything that we put in there as green or brown material. Here, except for some eggshells, everything else has disappeared. There is no water coming out of the compost pile and I cannot find any more insects in the bucket. That means our bucket compost is ready. 
Composting is a slow natural process and anything natural will take its own time. Normally, it takes a minimum of 2 to 2.5 months for the composting process to be complete. Don't expect anything before that. Now, how to use it in our garden? I strain the compost through a sieve. The fine material that falls through the sieve will be used to fertilize my plants and the solid ones that has not broken down will go back to the compost pile just like we did before. After harvesting the compost, if it is still moist, I'll keep it for drying for a few days. We can directly use it to feed our plants now. What I'm doing here is I'm going to replenish the soil in my raised beds and my containers. If you have not started your composting journey, please do start it because it is totally worth it. Most of the food and yard waste is sent to the landfills. Since there is no proper condition for composting there, the stuff rots, leading to methane emissions which is the great contributor to global warming. Composting is just a small bit that we can do for our environment, but it literally has groundbreaking impact. Also, just like the satisfaction that you get from harvesting a vegetable from your garden or seeing a seed sprout, the satisfaction of turning something that is considered as waste to something most beneficial for you, your garden and your environment is on another level. If you are not into gardening, you can still compost your kitchen waste. You can then sell them on eBay or Facebook marketplace and people like us would always be ready to buy them because good compost is always in demand. If you have any concerns, I can totally understand and let me know if I can be of any help. But if you start, there is no going back and I can assure you that. Hope I motivated you to start your composting journey. If you find this video helpful, kindly share it with your friends and spread the word. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next. Bye and take care.